structure that goes with it. And then you work it. Son, I don't want any noise. Thank you. Please sit down. Welcome. The challenge most of us have is that God has spoken, and because God said it, we then leave it alone. And then we're looking for another word. It's like we're now word junkies. You're now looking for another prophecy. You're now looking for another person to touch you. You're now looking for another person who will bring a word. And then when they bring it, you say, oh, someone else told me that. You need to know that when a word of prophecy is given, three sets of people hear it. Three people hear the word of prophecy over your life. The first one is you. You heard the word. The second person that heard it is who? Satan hears it as well. The third group of people that hear it is who? Sorry? The people, when God gives a prophetic word to you, he has spoken certain things to you in these few nights. How does it happen? It's the how. Heaven heard it. Hell heard it. And you heard it. So you see a lot of people say, and the Lord told me, and I heard, and there was a word of prophecy over me, and it hasn't happened. And then they begin to feel that God is not true. Or that prophet is a liar. No. You have a responsibility to pray the prophecy till it happens. You don't leave it hanging. How would it look when you get to heaven? And you're standing before the Father. And he shows you the picture of your life, which he will do for everyone. It will be like a TV screen. And then he shows you where he sent a word. And you didn't do it. And then he shows you all the blessings he had for you that you didn't touch. How will that sound? How will that look? You'll be frustrated because you can't come back here. But thanks be to God, you're not going to go to heaven missing on anything from now in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to teach you the how to make it happen. I was so blessed. There was a word of prophecy over me. And men came out here and prayed with me. But that's not where it ends. That's just the beginning of that word. I have a responsibility to take that word back to the Lord and pray it until the fire comes from my feet all the way to my body and I become a blazing ball of fire. So this gospel that tells you it's on God is false. You have the responsibility on the journey of your destiny. Because Satan heard the word. And he will fight you to make sure it doesn't happen. He'll fight you with all his tools. But heaven heard it as well. And heaven is waiting for you to rise. Awake. Take it. Pray it. Heaven backs you up. And it happens. So you're not disadvantaged in any way. You have heaven backing you up. So I want you to know 
that anything they said to you while we were here is true. But for it to happen, you must begin to take ownership. Your pastor can't pray it for you. I want to show you two birds. Well, let me just take only one. I want to show you this bird. Creation of God. Job chapter 39. By the way, Job is one of my most favorite books because it talks about my life. Job 39. I want you to see this bird. Job 39. Let's look at it from 13 all the way through 18. I'm teaching you the how to see that the word of God that you received this week and works. The word of God works, but you have to work it. Job 39 Let's read together from 13. We're reading it to 18, so five verses. Let's read it together. The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully, but cannot match the pinions and feathers of the stock. Please read, read, read. She leaves her eggs on the ground. She forgets that a foot may crush them or a wild beast may break them. She treats her young harshly as though they were not her own. Hey, her labor is in vain without concern. Let's go on. What kind of animal is that? What kind of creation is that? She's devoid of understanding and wisdom. We read it and we wonder why she does that. But the truth is that we're like her. So the word God has given you this weekend is like an egg. Don't leave it in the on the floor in the dust for someone to come and crush it. So the second bird that I wanted us to look at is the chicken. When the chicken lays eggs, what happens? She's guarding it. I know you Americans don't know that. But in where I come from, when a chicken is sitting on her eggs, ma, you don't mess with her. They have chickens. Oh no, you are different. You are Africans. Because <laughs> they have a garden, they have chickens. If you try to go to that chicken to take her eggs, she comes from your eyes. She comes straight for your eyes. She doesn't mess with it. She, she, she'll stop. And then she says, you're not backing up. 
She's looking for your eyes. She'll chase you. Chicken. You better run. So are you a chicken or no stretch? You have encountered God in a specific way. Don't leave it in the dust. Go incubate the word. Those who came in a bit late, I was saying, people, yeah, incubate it. Go incubate the word. Prophecies were given over me. You saw them pray over me. But that's just the beginning. I have to go sit on it. You have to sit on the word of God. We're too flighty. We're too carnal. You get the word. And you said, oh, the Lord gave me this revelation. And then you're looking for the next person to give you another revelation. What happened to the last one? It's in progression. So this is my charge to you. Don't, don't let these people distract you. They're doing their thing. Let's do our own. Go and incubate the vision. Go and sit on it. Go and sit on it. The things God told me this morning on my walk. Mommy, for look I'm coming to bother you because it's too big for me to carry. So when you were sharing that word, you saw I ran away from you. Don't give me another word. I ran from her. She was trying to, she was trying to tell me the Lord is I said, Don't tell me anymore. I'm scared. When I say I'm scared, do I have what it takes to incubate it? That's the question. This is going to demand some things from you. I encourage you, my dear friends, don't go back to your normal way of life. Go and incubate the eggs of God's promises that he gave you. Sit on the word of God. Write this down. The word of God works. But you must work it. It's not in another meeting. It's not in another conference. It's not in an anointing of a man of God. It's not somebody pouring oil on my head. They'll just mess up my hair. And then I have to go and wash it. Yeah. It's not in the anointing oil. Once in a while, that can come. It's in you owning responsibility for the word. The second thing I want to live with you. I don't know why and how you came in and you are listening to this, but this is how God wants it. I want, to, I want you to live your life ready. ready that the bridegroom can knock at midnight. She said I should repeat the first part. The first sentence. Because I love you. I have to think of what to do. <laughs> what was it? Live your life ready. Live your life ready. No one is promised tomorrow. No one. Live your life ready. When people offend you, and they will, take time before you go to bed. Cleanse your heart. Every night. Because you may not wake up here. And if you're not clear, Unforgiveness will lead you to hell. After all we've done here. 
live ready. Live your life ready. That's how I live. Two things yesterday should have gotten me upset. Two things. Two people. It was like hell sent them here. And I got to my room and I said, Lord, I can't afford to be angry. I cleaned my heart. What if I didn't wake up this morning? With all this, don't give anybody the, the opportunity to send you to hell. No one is worth it. And when I was on my walk again, I began to repent that I was even responding that way. That means I haven't passed that test. I said, Lord, cleanse me. Forgive me. I repent. Live life ready. Ready to give an account of what he told you to do on this earth. He gave you one talent. You must bring him two. He gave you two talents. You must bring him four. He gave you five talents. You present ten. If you can't think like that and live your life like that, you'll be tossed around anyhow. I'm very deliberate about where you see me. I'm deliberate about who I keep company with. I'm very, very careful about my space. This is a very private thing, very personal. All right, so please stop recording. Just pause it for a minute. question ma'am is um so if god has given you many words that you've not sat on where do you start from if god has given you many words that you have not sat on you have not worked it where do you start from start from the last one the last word he gave you the last word he gave you go and sit on it faithfully you would find that most of the ones he gave you before will line up because now you're going to sit for a longer time so if he gave you a word in 2015 you ignored it you put it in the dust if it hasn't been trampled upon yet you're good but if it's been destroyed you're on your own because what has happened is that time that cycle when he wanted to do something with you, is over. The last word he gave you, go and sit on it. If you missed this short time we were together, I guess you have friends now that are sitting in the room. Ask one of them to tell you what I said. You must sit on the word of God. You read it, you meditate on it, but then you work it. As for me and my household, it will serve the Lord. You sit on it. You sit on it. You don't get up. Are you a chicken or an ostrich? Yes, ma'am. out there is another one of the upper room experience we had um, we went to Austin I checked into Hyatt Regency God has given me a, a gift I can smell death I can smell death so they left and I checked into my room and I was smelling death in my room all over death and I'm telling you guys, it was so raw and so close. 
and I thought it was me and they were all gone. I went downstairs and I wanted to change my room. And they went changing my room. I wanted to check out of the hotel. And I, I really wanted to run. But I remembered, you're coming out from a, a conference and the last thing we did was in a fire pit. You on fire. Why are you running? You know that TikTok, why are you running? Why are you running? You just came out from a place where you're fireized. You paid. You paid for this hotel. You paid for this room. You must occupy it. And you came into this room, take authority over everything. So I had to walk in what I got here. You will be tested. Would you run? That thing manifested because I called my sister. I called Chioma. I called all the prayer intercessors. They started praying. And as they were praying that night, my son, Asika, was working in a hospital in Connecticut. And he was in hospice room. One old white woman was asking for him. And he came. The woman was looking at him and said, say that I'm your mother. Call me your mother. Call me your mother. And she, she started screaming and crying. And Asika knew right away that it was spiritual. And he said, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. He ran out and knew his mother was in trouble. And he went out and started interceding. Not knowing what's going on in us in Texas. Nkiru was interceding. Chioma was interceding. They all stayed up interceding. My son was encountering a witch that wanted to dread her life with mine. He ran and went to a corner and started calling on the blood of Jesus. My mother will not die. She will live. My mother will not die. She will live. Meanwhile, I'm praying. And I said, I came from a place. The last thing we did was fire pit. I'm not running out of here. As real as it was, I know that people are interceding, but I'm also on fire. That woman called for him again. And he went and looked at, she said, please say that I'm your mother. Say I'm your mother. And he said, blood of Jesus is against you. You are not my mother. He left. That woman died. That woman died. But I took authority over the atmosphere because life is spiritual. So what you got here, you will have to work it out. It works. All glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. It works. It works. You have to work it. Was that the last one we had? The one, the one, the last one. Because there was another one. You, you couldn't get a flight and all kinds of crazy stuff. That woman has a story that's interesting. There was a day I was praying on the altar and I said, no, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. I didn't know who it was. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was, I just went per sec. She went in for a small procedure and the nurse came and tagged her enemy's foot with a tag of the dead. Tagged it. As if But God had dealt with it before she got to the hospital. Can you tag a living person? I, 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 we'd already cancelled it. There was nothing we can do. It's real. So you have to learn to sit on the word. The word of God works, but you have to work it. You have to work it. You memorize it. You repeat it. You eat it. You digest it. You sit on it in prayer. something I want to share with you. Um, I just had a burden in my heart to come in here and, and just explain to you that the words God gave you, you're responsible for it, not him. 
So don't go back home and just start. No. He meant every word he gave you. There's a lot I can say. There's a lot I can share. But one thing I want you to understand is you are not disadvantaged in any way. everything it takes to rule and reign here and see your master and hear well done. So here and in the after you have an advantage. May God strengthen you. Strengthen your heart, strengthen your knees and strengthen your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. It's 9.55. I'm going to move to the next thing because we don't really have time today. Please, if you know you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, or you just know you need to be refired again, we're going to be ministering to you in one of the rooms in the back here. It's nothing to be ashamed about. You need it. That's the only way you can tarry in prayer. By the way, some of you have gone to churches that were bewitched. And the tongues you speak are demonic tongues. I can hear. You picked it up from water spirits. So most of you are speaking a tongue that is foreign to the Holy Ghost. I say most. Because in the, it's, it, they come in cycles. There was a time they poured it out. And you all sound the same in that particular cycle. You move to another one, you hear them. I'll be like, what are, what are you saying? What are you saying? That's why I, keep, I tell them, I, just be quiet, don't talk. Because they pollute the work. So take, take yourself back to Holy Spirit and say, purge me. If I've touched any strange fire, clear it out. No excuse. Go and sit on the word of God. Go back again. I'm leaving you with the word. Are you an ostrich? Or are you a chicken? Job 39, is that what we read? What verses? 13 through 18. You will see the ostrich there. She doesn't care about her labor. She doesn't care. She just has eggs and leaves them in the dust. God's word comes to you. And you just file it away. You are the ostrich. But the chicken, when she's incubating her eggs, if you come near her, she will pluck out your eyes. She'll come for you. Because she knows that's her future. Can see that you understand. Do you understand? Do you understand? <laughs> the Lord will help you in Jesus' name because life is spiritual. Last year we left this place and everything was great, and I was supposed to minister in Portland, Oregon the following weekend. And I just got in my car, my son was taking me to the airport. That car, God has saved my son and I. It would have been our coffin. So when you see me jumping and dancing and all this crazy stuff this girl is doing, it's because I appreciate preservation of life. What did he preserve me for? Because in a twinkling of an eye, when a car crash, the car was a wreck, totaled. But my son and I came out. So this is not... I'm telling you that because they're going to fight back. 
But the one who lives within me said it's not time. My time is not in their hands. I know what I see. I know the threats. You heard Dr. Abraham. She wasn't lying. Killing babies. A sacrifice to stop me. Who am I? No name, no title. There's no protocol here. Everything is not there today. It's just me and you. No walkie talkie, everything. No man of God. Somebody will carry my bag, another one carry my Bible, then. The thing is too simple. I don't know why we complicated it. We're brothers. Like this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you love one another. So what is all this star? The messenger has become more important than the message. May God deliver us. Run from them. Separate yourself from Yes, my darling. Separate yourself. Let's pray. Just talk to the Lord. Give me what it takes to sit like a hen upon the eggs of the word you gave me this weekend. Let me not be like an ostrich that has no understanding. Defend me. He has already sealed us this morning. Help me. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge and understanding. Let the scriptures be clear to me. Help me to know what I'm doing with my life. Help me to live ready. Ready to meet you. Ready to stand before you. So that you can say to me, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the rest of your Lord. Give me discernment. My days are in your hand. You can still use this life. You can still use it. Show me the way. This I ask you, O oh God. This I ask you. that by the next retreat if Jesus tarries my life will be totally transformed for your glory help me I pray in the name of Jesus the Christ Amen 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 wasn't that good? we give him all the glory so today is somebody's birthday. She's 50 today. She likes to be in the back office. She doesn't want to be seen. She doesn't like, you know, she's very, she's our American, Ikiti American. Mary Kitty. She calls herself a Kittyrian. A Kittyrian. She can't speak Yoruba, but she can speak a Kitty. Because she was born here and taken straight to the village. So she speaks the dialect of the village, but she can't speak the regular Yoruba. Isn't this interesting? A wonderful, wonderful friend she is. I'm really grateful to God that today she has a testimony of being alive. One of the kindest persons you can meet. If we tell her that someone in Nigeria doesn't have money to eat, the next thing she has sent money, she doesn't know them. She handles a department called the Whispering Hearts. The hearts that whisper, but they can't even articulate what they're going through. I met her through Dr. Tutu. 
I was called to please come and name a baby, which is one of my favorite things to do. I'm, you see me here, I'm good. The places where I enjoy to work is if I'm naming a baby or I'm burying someone. When you see me at a funeral, I'm a different person because I have everybody's attention. And I won't leave you to go home the way you came because I know you will listen to me. And I love it when I take a little child and take that child and dedicate to the Lord. So I was called to come and dedicate their baby, name their baby. 10 years, how many years ago? 12 years ago. That's how I met her and her husband. And the friendship has grown to where I call them family now. I can't say enough about her and her husband. I can't. They don't need me to say I need anything. Holy Spirit will tell them. You just see them at my door and bring me what I'm asking God to do. That's how close the Lord has brought us. I celebrate her today, not because of her birthday, but because of the quiet, gentle spirit, which is of great price before God, that she carries. And so in the next few minutes, we're going to, in our own little way, celebrate her. We can't celebrate her every, I mean, all the way. Right now, she should, we should have our shoebi, and uh, if you don't know what that means, we should have the headgear, and the women cooking in the back, and the small chops are being handled, and Sonia Day is playing. You know, you know I'm just saying now, that's how they do 50 years. But mm -hmm. every time her family will ask her, What do you want? Just, I just want to be at the retreat. I just want people to pray for me. Her desire is to be here on this day, and God made it possible. She's been through water. It didn't cover her. She's been through fire. It didn't destroy her. I know how many nights we will stand up and pray for this woman because the adversary was ready to take her enemy out. Everybody has a story around you. Don't look at anyone and think, oh, it's fine. No, they haven't opened their mouth to tell you. But through it all, what I admire about her the most is her obedient spirit. She doesn't argue with the Lord. God will tell her, do something. That's it. It challenges me. The level of how she just trusts God with the little in her hand and distributes to others. Celebrate with me this morning. Tino Adefoluke, the Ekiteria. Amen.